Oh, there's a new time now. It's a different thing. Now we can forget the muscles uh, and the bones for a while and just let, let loose of that information and go into the heart. And the heart is a muscular organ with chambers that are filled with blood. When they contract, it pumps the blood into attached pipes, which then distribute it throughout the body. The heart is about the size of a fist and lies behind the chest wall slightly on the left. Most big tubes called the great vessels plug into it from the top, suspending it, the heart downward, uh, then downward. And what organs lie on each side of the heart? The lungs. The lungs. The lungs. And who was just saying that first? Me, Joanna. <laughs> Good. What I'm also going to do is instead of breakout groups or anything like that, I'm going to have you, each of you, answer a question. So if you answered the question... I don't have to say anything anymore. You can't answer the next question. Great. Cool. But that way, everybody's... That way, I know people aren't falling asleep completely. Well, not everybody gets to answer a question, but, you know. <clears throat> okay, but that's, that was pretty easy, right? The lungs, yeah. are, the lungs are right here on the side. And that's that we have to worry about that. When the heart pumps or contracts, it creates friction. Friction can cause tissue damage. To protect against that, the heart is suspended in a fluid-filled bag called the pericardial sac. Peri means around. Cardio means heart. Anything with cardio means heart. The serous fluid itself is created by the body and kept in an enclosed space so that it doesn't leak out. Visualize an air-filled balloon, uh, balloon, make a fist about a heart size and push it into the balloon. The balloon symbolizes the serous membrane and the air spaces between is filled with serous fluid in the body. So it's not the air, but it's fluid in there. And that serous membrane surrounding the heart is called pericardium. And peri means around, cardio means heart. And the part of the serous membrane covering the heart is referred to as the visceral pericardium. What is the other part called? On the parietal outside? pericardium. Parietal pericardium. So that is a lot of talk for this thing over here. So the balloon is this thing. Did you guys understand that concept? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay, a anybody who doesn't, please ask questions because this is one that can take a while to understand that this is one membrane going around the organ and then the wall where the organ sits in. So in the heart is the heart air on the outside of the heart and then that fluid on the inside is like, like you, can, you can think of that being like lubricating fluid. Like, you know, oily kind of type substance that it doesn't create friction. And in the lungs, it's even cooler because in the lungs, that creates a suction that keeps the lungs against the chest wall so they don't collapse. So that's really cool as well. Where am I? There we go. All right. So that was okay for everybody? Yeah. God, I, it's either too easy or my booklets are working. Um, beneath all those membranes lies the heart muscle itself. What term do we use to describe it? And wait, that was Maurice Sol's second question, right? Yeah. Good. So you can't say anything more. Okay. Well, you can talk, but not to the question answering. <laughs> Anybody else? Myocardium. Myocardium. That Marcella, she got it first. Hooray. All right, myocardium. So anything myo refers to muscle. And cardio refers to heart. So we, we talked about the myo term in the muscle chapter. So the fleshy part here is the myocardium. You guys like the underlining? Yeah. Makes Good. it a lot more clear. Good. I know. It took me a while to come up with that. But I'm glad. That seems to be happy making. All right. So number four, you might have heard of arteries and veins. Those are the pipes that are <clears throat> attached to the heart. The ones leading away from the heart have to be strong walled and withstand the pressure forces uh, of the blood being pumped out of the heart. The other ones don't have to worry about that. They rather guide the blood back into the heart 
as it returns from the journey through the body. Which type are arteries, which veins, and uh, choose the correct statements? Arteries lead away from the heart. Wait, one person. Yeah, speak. Mm -hmm. Arteries lead away from the heart, and veins guide the blood back to the heart. Arteries away from the heart, and veins to the heart. Good. Everybody got that? Yes. Yes. And who was talking? Was that Ebony? Yeah. Thank you. So that was your question. Perfect. Um, so, I have a question five, just to let you know. <laughs> huh? I'm oh, yeah. Okay. Five, <laughs> I know you got to be on the bottom fast, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to get it. Well, and if you don't get to answer questions, it's not like to worry. I just want to make sure we go sort of in around and around a little bit. Um, um, okay. But the, the, uh, is it clear that when this heart pumps, these vessels right here, the red ones here, they got to be really strong. That's where the blood comes right out of it and pushes into these red ones. The blue ones here, they're labeled blue. They guide the blood, and, and you cannot go by the color, but here you can right now. They guide the blood back to the heart. There is no pressure on those vessels. You would only have one heart. You don't have hearts in all the organs that then push the blood back. There's different mechanisms that bring the blood back to the heart. So that's why... The, the, the walls look very different between, well, structurally, they, they look the same in, in, in the way that they're made up, but the amount of different things are in each one of them is very different. And so these are like baggy, you know, a lot of baggy arteries. You can see them. Those are the blue things. We get the varicose veins. They come out a little bit when we get older and stuff like that. That's the, that's the veins. You do not have that with the arteries. The arteries are pulsating a lot of times. When you stab an artery, it's going to blush out of your body, uh, the, the blood. So you have to, you know, it's, it's very different. There's a lot of force on those. And so that's why the definition is, is as such that arteries are vessels that feed away from the heart and veins are vessels that feed back to the heart. Uh, and most of the time, you can have them be blue and be red. However, the redness of the blood refers to the oxygenation of the blood, how much oxygen is in the blood. So in essence, the blood on the right side is of the heart is blue because that's the blood that feeds into the lungs. And so this vessel here, here it's red, but you see inside it's blue because on the heart model we use for the lab, it's actually blue and it is but it is a artery because it feeds away from the heart, even though if it's blue. So that's why you cannot buy, go by color. Everywhere else you can go by color, except for this situation right here. Um, but that's why we go by definition. All right, enough said of that stuff, unless you have a question. Having tubes attached to the heart that guide the blood away from it and then bring it back to it, makes it a closed system. The heart actually pumps blood into two of those systems. One goes to the lungs to fill the red blood cells up with oxygen and the other delivers oxygen to all the body cells to, so that they can help make ATP in the body. That's actually one of the main reasons why we need all that, to make energy for the body, right? We need oxygen to make energy and we need food to make energy, glucose. Uh, what do we call the two cardiac circuits? Pulmonary circuit, systematic circuit. He will say it. <laughs> Who was that? Adolfo. All right. You all have to be quiet on that front now, huh? Okay, I know. Sorry. Next, next we're going to let Carlos speak. Um, okay, pulmonary and systemic. So pulmonary is lung. Lung and systemic is everything else. The reason being, we need oxygen, and ox the major one of the major things about blood is to bring oxygen to the from the lungs to the body tissue. So we have to have this circuit that picks up the oxygen and then delivers it to the body. And then once the blood is exhausted of oxygen, that's when it becomes blue. Then it goes back to the lungs and filled up with oxygen again. So those are those two circuits. All right, next up is numero 
I know when I first started thinking about doing these questions where one person answers in class, I was like, I'm going to start calling out who's going to answer the question. So if people start talking, I can, you know, <laughs> play with everybody. But then it's, I could never do it. I'm too scattered. All right, number six. On the inside of the heart are chambers, which are hollow spaces that are filled with blood. When the heart contracts, the squeezing propels the blood forward. There are four chambers altogether, two of each circuit. The ones on the right, wait. The ones on the right pump the blood into the lungs, the ones on the left to the body. Each side has a smaller receiving chamber on top and a rejection chamber at the bottom of the heart. What are they called respectively? Um, it's the last two. So the ventricles are ejections? Yeah. And the atria are receiving? Yes. Good, very good. Hold on, let's get to that part here. So that's, again, that's actually right here. That's this picture. So you want to have, um, you know, I'm not totally sure why, but I'm sure there's many, many, many reasons why. One of them I can think of is the, is the fact that it probably smooths out the blood flow. So we have a four chamber <clears throat> where the blood comes in, sinks into downward with gravity into the main chamber. And then when the heart contracts, these main chamber muscles shrinks up and contracts. The muscle con contraction decreases the length of the muscle. Why am I not on the video for myself? Oh, right, there you go. And then the blood, when the muscle contracts, these chambers close up and that pushes the blood forward through this pipe and then through this pipe here, the aorta and the pulmonary trunk. Um, and these flaps here, these things sticking down, these are valves and they, they're going to close up because these strings attached to it, they're going to hold them in place like a sail. As the muscle contracts and shortens, these flaps go up a little bit and then they close up this hole so the blood doesn't go back in the atria. It only goes forward into the pulmonary trunk here or up here is the aorta. So, so, so that's why you kind of have these two chambers, or that's what you have um, 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 there. And um, that makes sense? Mm -hmm. Good. Atria and ventricle. And see the, you can't see it fully on this, but a little bit. The muscle on the left side is bigger than a muscle on the right side because the right side only has to pump the blood to the lungs, which is right next to the heart. And the left side has to pump the blood to the entire body. And so that's why there is more muscle mass to the left side. Um, they visualize it a little bit, not that great. Number seven, Carlos. All right. When the heart contracts, the, the body needs to make sure the blood gets pumped forward and doesn't get pushed backwards. Valves make sure of that. One set of them guard between the receiving and ejection chambers. They are constructed quite exquisitely. Flaps cover the opening between the chambers when the heart contracts. What are those set of valves called? The aortic valleys. The who? The, how do you say the word? The, the, a, the aortic, the, the atrioventricular or the aortic? <laughs> Between those two, right? It's the atrioventricular valve. Okay. And that was Iona, right? Good. Yeah. Um, but they are very close. The, the aortic valve and the semilunar valve are one, they're one type of valve. And the atrioventricular valve is another. So let's go through that real quick. What's the, and I have the other question there. Um, an ileocecal valve, don't worry about that. That's in the intestinal system. That's a different thing. All together. That's just to confuse you. All right, here we go. So the atrioventricular valve, if you look at the name, atrioventricle. So there's in between the atrium and the ventricle. So that's the name right in here, atrioventricular valves. All right. Mm -hmm. And um, they have flaps on them and those strings, these are all the described things here, the popular muscle and the cord tendine those heart strings, those are the ones that go up when the muscle contracts and shortens and then the flaps uh, cover 
uh, uh, the flaps cover the hole going back into the atria, so no blood goes back into the atria. And if there is blood going back in the atria, you have a heart murmur. That's another thing. Uh, and see here, when you look at collectively, you have this valve here, and then here on the other side. You have both of these valves on each side of the heart. Basically, both sides of the heart are like the same uh, you know, mirror image. Um, but on the right side, it's called the tricuspid valve. And on the left side, it's called the bicuspid valve, if we want to give it other names and to differentiate more. And the bi and the tricuspid refers to the flap. So on one side, it has two of these flaps coming down with strings attached. And on the other one, it has three of them attached. And then another term they also use for the left one is mitral valve because two flaps – if you put them upside down, it looks like a bishop's mitre, and that's a hat, the bishop's hat. So that's an old, old term, mitral valve. Um, but that goes all the way back when, you know, in Italy, when they start giving name to all that stuff. Um, when Galileo started dissecting. Did you know Galileo started, I had to go to the Pope to start dissecting bodies, I mean, in the Western world? And and the Pope said, you can only die. I mean, he, first he said, you can't do that. That's our prerogatory we are we can we can do that but you can't and at some point the pope said you can do you can do that but you cannot dissect the mind the mind is ours you know 1500 and we talked about that like in the first class oh we talked about that already yeah 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 yeah. so so it's very you know it's very important i think when we then go back in neurology and look at neurology to really try to look at things like neuroplasticity and how the brain works because we're just learning how these things go uh, because, yeah, Candace Purse reaches back to that time when this stuff happens. So anyway, that's this valve. And then the other valve is another set of covers the ejection, uh, the exit of the ejection chamber. When the blood gets pumped out of the heart into the great vessels, they prevent the blood from boiling back into the heart. So they guard the exit. What are those called? The last one. Semilunar valve. Catherine? Yeah. Semilunar valves. Good. They are right here. So, um, well, let's go back to this piece. They are right, these flaps that come up like that on this side here and on that side here. And so when you take uh, the heart and you cut, you cut it right through here, you look from up above down, you can see it this way. See, you here, see, you can see two flaps, here you can see three flaps, and then you have these, these, these half moon shaped things sticking up. That's why they call these semi lunar valves. All right? Mm -hmm. I think that's good. Good. If no questions, we keep going. The heart cannot use the blood it pumps to feed its own muscle. It needs to divert oxygenated blood from the bottom of the aorta. What are the main, the two main coronary arteries called? Um, is, it is it RCA and LCA? Yes. Right. Thank you, Jessica. Right coronary artery and left coronary artery. Where was that? Did I miss that much? Right coronary artery and left coronary artery. They call it main artery here for some reason. There and there. And let's see. Did I miss anything here? Yeah, but I kind of skipped over here. Um, and we can do that. I did that. Did you do the concept questions? I forgot I had concept questions. No, I just noticed them. I know. <laughs> I, I was know. so caught up with the exam. <laughs> I know, right? I was like, oh, because I'm going to take those out. It's way too much hassle to grade all of that stuff. Uh, especially okay. when the format is different where I can have, you know, we can talk and I can make sure we, everybody has some stuff to say. Um, but in there, I talk about the parts of the pulmonary and the systemic circuit, and what I want. And that's actually um, um, what I have here. And we talked about it already. So the, the pulmonary circuit 
refers to the right side of the heart that feeds basically the lungs. That's why they call that pulmonary circuit. And so when you look at the circuit itself, you go from the um, right atrium here, from the right atrium to the right ventricle and then out through the pulmonary arteries. See here, they're called arteries. First pulmonary trunk, right, coming out and then arteries going away. Uh, 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 splitting up into each lung, and this is a place where this is the place where the the blue ve vessels are arteries and not veins. So make a mark on that for your future studies. That's helpful to remember that. Uh, and then and then from the lungs, we here we're gonna get oxygen to the tissues. I mean to the uh, red blood cells, and then we we go back down to the heart, or immediately towards the heart and those are then the pulmonary veins that feed into the heart they come also they come from the back close to the pulmonary arteries because they come from the same place and they feed into the right atrium and then from that point on we call it the systemic circuit and then we go into the left atrium the left ventricle and we the blood then gets pushed out of the left ventricle into the aortic arch and the aortic arch is this big honking round thing on top of the heart. And it has an ascending part, an arch itself, and a descending part. And the descending aorta goes all the way down to below your belly button in the back of the spine. And then it splits up to go to each leg. So that's a large artery that goes all the way down to um, then a lot of arteries come off to feed the liver, to feed the intestine, to feed the arms, to feed the head, to feed the kidneys. Well, actually, the ones for the head, they come off right here. They come on right out here and they go to the head. Um, and so that's then the systemic circuit. And from the tissues, then the blood comes back, uh, back gets tissues, and then it comes back and goes back into the left, at the right atria. And at that point, it's the pulmonary circuit again. And so that's how we describe those circuits. And the only thing I left out in that description now is the valves that we also pass. So if you really list it up, you go, you know, uh, right atrial, uh, right uh, atrioventricular valve, right ventricle, uh, right semilunar valve, and then out to this uh, pulmonary trunk and pulmonary artery and blah, 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 blah. All right, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean, by now you had it a few times. I just want to make sure we touch on it since it's not in a yeah. quiz question. Um, and then this, of course, when you get to the, oh, we have to talk about the labs. Huh? We do have to talk about the labs. So when it gets to the labs, then this is a good question. This is a good picture where pretty much everything is visualized, I think. Um, and then we talked about the coronary vessels and then let's go right to the next topic, unless somebody has a question. And if you don't speak up, I assume you're good. All right, number 10. As a pump, the heart has, a con has to contract rhythmically since the heart muscle cells don't contract on their own. They need to be stimulated by a nerve each time that the heart pumps. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So each time your muscle wants to contract, you've got to irritate it. You've got to shock it a little bit so it contracts. Um, as a clever muscle, the heart builds its own pacemaker. So it's got its own little shocking mechanism right into itself by the right atrium on top there from here it activates the muscle cells first the ones by the atria the impulses then gets intensified and spreads through the walls of the ventricle making the cells contract in unison also called a functional sensation what is the technical term of the pacemaker anybody in right no this one? Sinoatrial node or sinoatrial node. Yeah, sinoatrial node. Very good. That was Marcella. Yeah. Wait, you already spoke once. Oh, I'm sorry because nobody was answering. I know, I know, I know. That's good. See, I'm putting people on the spot, huh? Now I... Is there anybody? Okay. Now you have to start really doing the quiz before you come to the online class with me. I know. No, you're good. It's no worry about it. You're fine. I really appreciate your participation, actually. Oh. Um, so, yeah, the, on top here, we got the SA note, the sinoatrial note, they call it also the SA note, and then it spreads over. 
the atrial, and then that makes the atrial contract a little bit before the ventricles, and all the blood gets pushed into the ventricles from the atrial at that point. And so that's actually very um, um, useful. It's very useful. Oh, here's a better picture of it. Here's the SA node, say your atrial node, and then it goes down here. And then down here, that's then the AV node, the atrioventricular node. And that's another place where the signal gets intensified. So here's where the signal starts. And here is where the signal gets intensified before it spreads through the uh, down the, the middle of the ventricles, which is called the interventricular septum. That's a picture up here, this piece, interventricular septum. And blah, 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 where am I? And then it goes around the ventricular walls and the whole ventricles, both of them, the heart contracts. Mute, con please, contract. Um, um, and what was I going to say? Oh, and then it, co it contracts a little bit after the atrial through that delay right here. And that makes sense. So the first little pump is the atrial pushes the blood into the ventricle and then these valves close and the ventricle forcefully pushes the blood out through the big vessels on top. Um, good. Let's see what the next question is. I probably just gave it away. Hold on. Who can fastest unmute themselves? In order to understand how the heart's electrical impulse system works, we can measure the light electrical uh, current that stimulates the muscle cells. An electrocardiogram, EKG, ECG is, trace, is tracing of that. The deviation from the horizontal line means electrical activity. What does the QRS complex indicate? Yes, the beginning of the ventricular excitation. The beginning of the ventricular excitation. Yes, it does. And that was Shanine. Yeah. Sorry, I just, I just uh, was doing a, a look at my second question from the other assignment and I realized that we just, we just discussed that. Uh, uh, so we don't have to talk about that no more. So that's um, right here, EKG. QRS complex is the beginning of the ventricular uh, excitation. So you got this first wave here that's a little bump. And that's when that, when, that, when that electricity here spreads through the atrial. That's that little bump, the P wave. And then when it gets down in here and it spreads through the whole muscle wall, that's when we call it QRS complex. That's a big discharge. This is electricity. You can also have, uh, listen to the heart. You can have a stethoscope to listen to the heart. And you can have really, really sensitive stethoscopes. And you can actually pick up a lot of also what the electricity produces here in, in that graph. Um, and then at the end, we have one more thing. It's called a T wave. And the T wave <coughs> is at the end of ventricular repolarization. And so when we talk about, Oh, yeah, we did not talk about depolarization and repolarization. When we talk about nerve impulse, like you, 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 have you ever touched your funny bone or hit your funny bone and it hurt down the arm? Mm -hmm. That's nerve impulse. So that electricity going down, we call that a nerve impulse. And, and that's what you can feel. And when you feel that, the technical term is going to be depolarization which is like a nerve discharge you can think of that as discharge and then after the nerve discharge it has a little bit of a moment where it has to replenish its charge again so it can discharge again and that is a term repolarization is used for that and we'll talk about the details about why that term is that when we get to the to the nerve stuff uh, so don't worry about that yet but uh, the discharge of the atrial contraction is here. The discharge of the ventricular contraction is here. And then the T wave is the, 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 uh, the recharging of, of, that, uh, of that nerve, basically, of the ventricular excitation of the bigger one. The recharging of the nervous system that goes to the atrial is hidden behind this big piece. It's overpowering it. So anyway, does that make sense a little bit? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. You guys are good. The heart muscle contracts rhythmically to pump blood. After contraction, it has to relax to fill up with blood again. What terms do we use to describe these states, two states of this biphasic cycle? Any new? You said don't answer twice. Nope. <laughs> Anybody else on the board? I got 22 people. I'm one of them. 
<laughs> All right, we can go a second time then. Sesto and Yasto. Now everybody going. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? You were first. What? Me, Joanna. <laughs> yeah, I heard. <laughs> what is it? Uh, the diastole, or I don't know how you pronounce it, and the systole. Sis si yeah, diastole, diastole and systole, they call it. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. close enough. I mean, you know, the good thing about all these names, they're all they're all way forward <laughs> anyway. You can say whatever you want, really. Just read it. Uh, so, systole, you think of contraction. Diastole, you think of relaxation. And you probably mute if you don't. Sorry. If you haven't muted. There's one person who did it. Yeah, there you go. Thanks. Uh, if you... Um, you heard it probably because of the blood pressure. The first number in the blood pressure is the systolic blood pressure. That's the blood pressure when the heart contracts. And then the second number you you get is the diastolic blood pressure. And that's when the heart muscle is relaxing. Oh. That's where we got that from. I know, right? That's kind of cool. And what's even cooler is going to be hard sounds. Just wait for that. <laughs> we can listen to the heart. It actually makes it two distinct sounds. Lopped up, lopped up. You know, a long time ago when you did exercise, I mean, a long time ago when I exercised, then, then you hear that stuff, actually, a little bit. Uh, those sounds are produced when the heart valves close. So it's like a little clicking. When the heart valves close, that little clicking happens. Which valves make which sounds? Lopped up, lopped up, lopped up. Dub, lub. Lub, dub what? Upon yeah, dub, Dub upon closure of semi-lunar semi valves and then love upon closure of AV valves. Good. Very good. So this is round two. So everybody gets two answers. Then you got to be quiet again. I mean, you can always <laughs> ask questions, but no answer giving. Okay. I know. <laughs> and see, we'll see. I Watch out on Wednesday. Many more people are participating in this. Um. So the first sound you hear is lub. And when the blood goes from the atrial to the ventricle, the AV, and then the ventricle starts contracting, these valves close first. The AV valves close first. So lub is that first sound. So it's because that's the AV valve. And then, uh, or that's how we can think about it. And then the blood gets pushed out of the ventricles. And when all the blood is out of the ventricles and can't quite make it over the arch and the muscles is relaxing. There's a little bit of blood that falls back down that couldn't quite make it. And that closes basically these semilunar valves. So not all the stuff falls back in. And then that's the second click. That will be the dub when those close. So the, so the, basically the love happens when the, at the beginning of ventricular contraction, this contracting and the dub happens at the end of when this contraction happens. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. Very good. Because we soon have to come. The cardiac cycle describes the events of one full contraction of the heart. It mainly describes what chamber is filling and which one is contracting. During which part of the cardiac cycles are all valves closed? Uh-huh. Who hasn't spoken? Ventricular contraction isovolumetric mm -hmm. good that's so a fun when we, to say huh it's a fun word to say i know isn't that a cool isovolumetric Ventric, yeah <laughs> so when we go back to what we actually just talked about with the love dog we just goes it's the same thing again it's just now it's down here so small so first what happens is when the blood comes in, the, the blood comes into the atria and flows passively into the ventricles. It's called ventricular filling. And then the ventricles first contract. We said that when we talked about the um, conducting system. And that's called the atrial contraction or atrial kick. And it, that forces all the blood to go straight down into the ventricle and sort of pushes it all in as much as possible. 20% of filling is that. And then the muscle of the heart, the heart muscle starts contracting and the, 
and slowly these valves close here to, towards the atria, so they can't get the blood can't get out of there anymore. But the semilunar valves are not quite open yet because there is blood sitting on those, so it takes a little bit of force to push that door open. But you know, like if you're storming out of a door, the force of what comes out of there is much stronger then. And so that's why it makes sense that for a brief moment, we increase the we increase the the pressure inside the ventricle through the isovolumetric contraction. And at some point, those semilunar valves get pushed open and then we have the ventricular ejection. And then when the muscle stops doing anything here and stops and starts relaxing, we're going to have an isovolumetric relaxation. Um, because for a brief moment, all the valves are closed again when that happens. As, as the muscle relaxes, the blood flows down, the semilunar is closed, and the AV valves are not quite open yet. This is very fast, right? This all goes very fast. Hello, Nadiri. Mm -hmm. Hi. I haven't had you. Did you just join? No, but oh, I can do the last one. No, no, but I haven't seen you. I haven't gotten you enrolled when you caught you. Really? Um, yeah, but now I got you. Don't worry. Um, and so then that cycle repeats itself. So this, this is really a, a very, you know, close caption of what goes on in here as the blob flows through these chambers to just describe how all of that works. That term isovolumetric basically simply means iso means same and volume, you know, is how much volume something holds. Is it a pound or, I mean, is it a, is it, is it a pint or is it a liter or? a gallon or how much volume that is. Okay. What is ISO mean? ISO means same. Same. Okay. It's the same thing. So it's an equal. In mathematics, it will be equal. You know, well, no, that's not true. It stays to like, like isovolumetric means the volume is not changing. The volume stays the same. Okay. Same. That's the word ISO. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm telling you, those are most important is to understand those little things because then you can piece together this word, this language of anatomy, like it's, you know, building blocks, like, like Lego blocks or something. Well, anyway, and lastly, in this chapter, we have to figure out how much blood the heart pumps. The cardiac output measures the volume ejected by the heart in one minute. What are the two factors that determine how much that is? Heart rate and is the heart rate a stroke volume? Yes. And who else was speaking? Me, Melissa. Okay. And who else was I uh, hearing then? Nadirni. Oh, good. So you didn't show up on... I'm not so sure what shows, what shows up on you guys' screen, but mine is a little messed up today. Um, but anyway, that's the last question. So let's go to that real quick and talk about that. So that's here. So... It's it's really not too complicated, right? It's 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 is you the heart pumps and each time it does all of this stuff, all of this cardiac cycle one time, that is one heart rate that gives you. And during that heart rate, one time that volume that blood comes out of that heart is about seventy milliliters per that one time that the heart pumps per beat, basically. So when you want to understand how much blood does the heart pump per minute on each side that is you look at uh you look at how many beats per minute do you have and then how much does it pump per beat and of course it's science so it's milliliters it's not ounces it's milliliters and 70 no i better don't do that conversion you got to do that mm -hmm. yeah. it's just a volume question right and and so then you want to know how much that cardio output is you put heart rate 70 about times stroke volume 70 about and you get out 4.9 liters per minute of blood gets pumped out of a heart at rest at rest then the cool thing about that is you can briefly get that heart rate up to 180 if you exercise you want to cat you want to push it up push it up a little bit and then and then uh so that that gets a lot more blood pumped and then you can also 
get uh oh this one goes up much they can double as well you can get because the the more that the heart pumps the fat the faster the more it exerts itself the more the muscle stretches before it gets all the volume in and then pumps again and that can be up double the volume it has at rest and so up when you look at those two numbers you can pump up to 25 liters or five times as much blood if you have to run from the lion so to speak or then if you're sitting at rest so that's impressive to me. That's, that's the big piece I got from this slide. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah.